All right, what's on the bench today? I was on eBay and I found this pretty cheap, so I figured I'd buy it. This is an RF probe. Um, I was thinking about building my own RF probe because I haven't seen, there's, there's everybody and their brother has, has built one of these things. And um, there's a couple of varieties and I thought maybe I could build one that had multiples multiple versions and multiple purposes all in one probe, which I haven't seen done before. I've seen individual ones, but not them put together. Anyway, that's a different project. Today's project is a Fluke 85 RF probe. So what is this thing? It's just a voltage, regu a voltage rectifier. So you put, can put it on RF AC and it rectifies it to DC, and then you can measure it with a DC uh, Ohm meter, uh, DC multimeter, right? So, uh, yeah, you put ground on, you probe around. It's great for troubleshooting. You can look, oh, I got a signal there, got a signal there, got, a, oh, oh, no signal there. And so that's what most of the people use this thing for. Um, I don't know if people actually use this to measure voltages, like is it, you know, is it where it should be or not? But it's great for troubleshooting for sure. Um, it does have some specifications on how good it's supposed to be. Um, so maybe people do use it for RF measurements, um, but that's what we'll do today. Uh, the uh, banana jack says Pomona on it, so yeah, Pomona. And uh, what is this thing? Okay, so it's an 85 RF, so it's good to 500 megahertz. Uh, ratio accuracy says it's good to a dB, plus or minus a dB. Uh, frequency response, blah, 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 blah. Uh, 3dB, isn't that, isn't that 200 to 500, it's plus or minus 3dB. That's, that's a factor of two, right? <laughs> that's not great. Anyway, um, let's see, what is inside this thing? So, uh, yeah, it's one of these. Uh, so the AC comes in, AC coupled, goes into a rectifier. This catches the peaks. It keeps them there and then it'll slowly die off through this other thing down here, and then you can adjust it in production to make it all nice and nice. Um, and then you just hook it up to your own, um, your uh, Fluke multimeter and you're done. Um, but any multimeter would work. Um, it says, does it say on here? It's just that, well, don't put more than 30 volts into it. That'd be pretty hard to do in RF land, I think. Well. I guess not if you had like tubes and stuff, but in 12 volt radios and stuff, I think it'd be pretty hard to do that. Let's see here. Um, yeah, here's, here's the, here's the data sheet plus or minus half a dB. I don't know. Um, yeah, not a lot. Not a lot said here. Um, so I'd say let's go ahead and try it out. Okay, we're going to be doing some, doing some measurements with the oscilloscope here. Um, this is going to be the input. Uh, it's going into channel 3, uh, terminated with uh, 50 ohms. And uh, we're going to read out the frequency here. We're at, we're at 80 megahertz. And then this is the output of the... Um, of the sensor, and I'm using a uh, high impedance probe, a, a 10 megahertz, uh, 10 mega ohm, I'm sorry, 10 mega ohm, uh, four puff input, a <laughs> very expensive oscilloscope probe uh, to, to measure the, um, to measure the uh, voltage, which currently is around uh, point, well, 220 uh, millivolts, something like that. And uh, so I'm going to um, <clears throat> vary the uh, vary the frequency, and you can watch the um, you can watch the voltage here. Uh, zero is set right at the bottom line here, so it goes up to 220 millivolts. Um, so as I go up in frequency, you can see it's starting to uh, find some points where it's not quite rectifying, but on average the you know, our voltage isn't changing too badly. It's gone up a little bit. And then as I go farther, oh, it's gone off the scale. So I would say it's probably out of spec here, right? We're at 220. So um, it seems as though it operates pretty well up to 200 megahertz. And then after 200 megahertz, it just goes squirrely. 
and it goes way up there. It finally comes back down to 90, and then it kind of waffles around, and then, well, here is it. This is what, 500 mega, it shouldn't, shouldn't operate below this, but we're down in the weeds here, right? It's just not working well at all. So really, it seems as though this particular probe really only works up to about 200 megahertz. Um, and then it'll start getting, giving you way too much voltage above that. And then it comes back down at about three, 300. So I think it can kind of measure okay up to 200. It will tell you if something's there or not up to 300. And then after 300, just all bets are off. It's just, it's just dead. So yeah, I don't know what to think. Um, Comment below if you've ever measured this on yours before, or whether you always just trust what the data sheet says. All right, so some people are going to say, "Oh, you can't use an oscilloscope; it's got to go into a multimeter, and then it'll be then it'll be fine." So we're going to put it into a 10 meg ohm input. Uh, uh, I'm not a big fluke fan, but uh, Agilent's just as good. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is a 10 meg ohm input impedance. Uh, input impedance um, multimeter. So let's go back down to, here's uh, 60 megahertz. So yeah, around two, two, 220. We're gonna go, now we're at 210, 280, 370. So what did this, what did it do on the other scope? It went funny at 200, right? 160. 180, 200, and then it's start, starting to go funny at 210, and it's gone down, 260, 280, 300. It is, it is behaving differently. Let's go to 300, where are we now? 300, we're at 160, oops. I just lost my connection. All right, let's, let, I'm gonna set something else up because it does seem to be behaving differently here. So um, I have the generator coming into a 50 ohm load and I have a T here. We're looking at the voltage with the probe um, and uh, that is the voltage at uh, 40 megahertz. All right, about 220 like as before. And uh, let's make that square. All right, so let's go here up to 100, 100 megahertz. And it's doing pretty good here, 140, a little bit high, 170, here's 200, a little bit high, 250, way high, 250 is way high, 300 is comes back down a little bit, 350 is dead. It's just dead at 350. Um, yeah, so if we go up, 400, dead. 500, dead, 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 dead. Yeah, kind of a weird thing, huh? 370, 340. Where's the comeback? There we go, 310. 310, 320, 310, 320. Really bizarre. So once again, uh, below, below 200, it's working just fine. It's working just fine. All right, earlier I made these measurements um, and uh, from 50 to 500. And here's zero volts, 100 millivolts, 200 millivolts. So, and here's, 200 so we're this is kind of the range I say it's good and then it just goes wacky above 200 so yeah it just it just does weird stuff so I don't know seems kind of strange to me okay well that's uh, my impression of this thing um, seems to be good below 200 megahertz but not above 200 megahertz comment below if you ever used one of these things now there's several models 
There's the 85-2, I think the Roman numeral 2. This is just the 85, so maybe maybe the data sheets are talking about a better one than this one. Maybe this one's old, I don't know. Um, but uh, it does seem to work great up to 200 and then uh, not so much past that.